Welcome to Creative Cow's DSLR Podcast. I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Rich Harrington. You know, Rich, one of the things that we see all the time on the Creative Cow and the DSLR forum is people talking about the frame rate that they should use when they're using one of these new DSLR cameras. Yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion because for many folks, this is the first time that really shooting a native 24p frame rate is an option. You know, previously they were doing a 24p look, but yep. the world has really changed and now we truly have 24p high definition. Plus, you know, well, should I be shooting in NTSC frame rates or PAL frame rates? Absolutely. And why 60? So, I mean, there's a lot of choices on these cameras. Why don't you just break it down? You know, there's four options, yep. 24, 25, 30, and 60. Or 50 for those folks who are over in PAL land. True. Yep. When do I choose them? Well, part of this is a stylistic thing, right? You know, if you're trying to go after that filmic look, shooting 24 frames per second is going to give you a much more you know, filmic type look than shooting, say, at 30 or 50 or 60. Um, so that's part one, is sort of the aesthetic that you're going after. But generally speaking, I think if you're trying to do things that are film-based, independent, you know, 24 is a good choice. Um, 25, um, which is the, the frame rate in the PAL world, is a common standard broadcast frame rate in PAL world. Yeah. Um, 30 frames per second um, is common in NTSC countries. And then when you get to 50 and 60 frame rates, for high definition and 50 for PAL world, 60 for uh, the rest of the world. Now the one thing- Overcrank, right? Well, there's, there's a couple things there, yeah. The one thing that can be slightly confusing, and I think this also happened when, you know, some of the first DSLRs came onto the market, like the Canon 5D Mark II, people saw 30 frames per second and they're going, hold on a second, I don't shoot 30 frames per second, I shoot 29.97 frames per second, right? And the cameras were confused initially, but then they caught on and they now support the real frame rates. Exactly. So one of the things I think people need to understand is that from all intents and purposes, when you see 24, you see 30, fractional frame rates are often involved. And fractional frame rates are used in NTSC countries primarily um, to deal with uh, you know, the slowing down that needed to happen because of power and color and all sorts of other stuff, right? So when you see 30 frames per second, Typically, it's really 29.97. When you see 24 frames per second, it's really typically going to be 23.98. But, but the big thing there, though, is that if you had a first generation camera, many of them had it wrong. So they did. Yeah. you want to update the firmware in your camera, which is usually as simple as logging into the manufacturer's website, yep. loading the firmware onto an SD or a compact flash card, and then just going through your menus and choosing reset and yep. loading that new firmware, because that is a big difference. You know, yeah. Those decimals can really catch you flat-footed. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you try, if you you know, we'll talk about in a later episode, working with um, dual system sound, recording on a, on a digital audio recorder. And if your audio recorder was, say, set to record at, you know, 29.97 or something like that, but your camera's shooting at 30, guess what? Pretty quickly, my lips would be moving, but you're sound gonna, would be coming and, off. And it, it was it was a hassle in the early days of, uh, of these cameras, but yeah, now most manufacturers- Early have days them. being a year ago? Exactly. <laughs> now most camera manufacturers you know, have sort of said, oh, well, we need to standardize you know, to, to traditional broadcast type frame rates. So besides the aesthetic part of when you're gonna shoot, you know, shooting 30 for just you know broadcast or reality television or whatever it may be, shooting 24 for film, um, the other thing that comes into consideration is that you can also pull off, as you were just mentioning a minute ago, special effects, if you will, um, by depending on which frame rate you choose. So for example, here on my Canon 7D, if I go into one of the menu pages here, you'll notice that I can choose a different frame size, right. but next to each one, I can actually choose what the frame rate. So yeah. it's 30, 24, just keeping in mind, on this camera, these are actual fractional frame rates. But if I go down here to say 720, you'll notice that it says 60 frames per second. Right. Now, the thing about 60 frames a second is that most people are going to find it a little too jarring, a little too real, because it's 60 frames per second. Right. Right? It, it looks good for sort of sports or action flick type stuff, yep. but when you're looking at it for normal everyday things, whether it be an interview or you know just fluid motion, it yep. definitely feels sort of hyper real. Absolutely. And one of the things that I think that a lot of people who are attracted to these cameras, um, you know, they're going after things like, you know, really shallow depth of field, a nice filmic look. And one of the techniques that, you know, that's, you know, historically been used in film cameras is this idea of overcranking footage. That is, that you would shoot at a faster frame rate than you actually need, but when it was played back at the proper frame rate, in the case of film, 24 frames per second, you'd have a nice in-camera slow motion. Right? right. And typically when you're doing these, you know, the Canon cameras are going to drop down to a smaller frame size of 720. Right. But that's okay. You can mix 720 and 1080 material in the timeline. Sure. And then, you know, you could process some material using After Effects or Cinema Tools, yep. Premiere Pro. So it's pretty straightforward. So I, I think the big thing here, is, and we've learned this time and time yep. again, is that you're going to work on different projects with different requirements always. And I mean 
always check your frame rate settings before you roll on that project. Yeah, and then make sure everybody knows what they are, right? If you have multiple cameras on the shoot, make sure everybody's shooting at the same frame rate. Or if you're going to shoot, especially frame rate like 60, make sure that everybody knows what you're doing, what it's for, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, choosing the actual frame rate to a large degree is stylistic, but you know, it's uh, there are certain circumstances like when you're shooting for broadcast or whatever that you have to shoot at a certain frame rate. Great. Well, it makes a lot of sense. So hopefully on your next project, you'll know which frame rate to choose. Go ahead and head on over to creativecow.net. We've got a very active DSLR forum where you can post questions, look for answers as well, and be sure to check out the magazine. My name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. Thanks for joining us.